Good morning and welcome to Mount Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. And you very quiet. I'm glad that you can make it through the, um, the rain as the season decides what it's doing. I'm not sure. The other day it felt like it was spring and later this week it's going to get back to winter. So it's a, a pleasure to be with you this morning and before we begin our worship I would like to just bring your attention to some of our announcements for today. Um, there will be a finance committee meeting uh, following the worship today so I invite those on the finance committee to, to stay, um, grab some refreshments uh, during the fellowship and then we will meet either here in the sanctuary or maybe down the stairs in one of the Sunday school classrooms. I'll let it up to, to Jim to decide where, where we will be. Um, Wherever you want to be. Okay. Uh, and last week, because of the dripping snow, we, we canceled our community youth group and uh, Pastor Eric asked that we could move it to tonight. So we will be meeting tonight uh, with, the, with the community youth uh, at St. Mark's over on Wilsonville Road at 6 o'clock, and we will have pizza available for kids and uh, some games and a Bible lesson. So I encourage you, if you have students from 4th grade to 12th grade, um, you're, you're all welcome to join us tonight. And then, uh, this coming Saturday, there will be a men's breakfast held here at 9 o'clock. It is free for all men to, to come and join and we'll just have a time of, of fellowship and devotion and uh, and enjoying some good good food prepared um, especially by Jerry I believe, today. so if you came to one last year that we had uh, we might have, it was a lot of good food so invite some friends to come with you and then on February the 13th we will have a Shrove Tuesday community pancake dinner that dinner is by donation, so uh, if you know someone that, that is in need of a good hot meal at night, as uh, we get to the end of the epiphany season and look towards the season of Lent, and we try and, and give up some of the stuff that we're going to enjoy, hopefully on, on Tuesday night, on the 13th, as we have some pancakes and, and maybe some hot snacks too. So, Come out anytime between five and seven. And is there anything else about that? And if you'd like to, to help set up or clean up, take we'll some volunteers. And then that same week, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday week for us. Um, there will be an Ash Wednesday service here on the 14th at 7 o'clock. And then our third Thursday prayer service is at 6. Um, are there any other announcements that I need to bring to everyone's attention? I think I covered most of the stuff that's coming up. Um, it seems like Lent is coming here quicker than probably we anticipated. And this is one of those years where Easter comes very early. Uh, Easter will be on March. 31st. So now that we got through our announcements, um, let us now turn our hearts over to what we came here to do, which is to worship our risen Lord and Savior. So I ask you to, you're already quiet, so quiet in your hearts and focus on the cross this morning as the light of Christ is brought into the sanctuary and the prayer is played for us. Thank you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning that we are able to join together in one voice to worship our Lord and Savior. Lord God, help us to silent our inward thoughts and focus on you this morning. Focus on God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit come and be with us this morning as we lift up our voices to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing as you're able. Hymn number 62, All Creatures of Our God and King. Thank you. 
Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of food as they uh, eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. There are no we, me, we are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. So ends our reading this morning. Just 
just before the Israelites are going to enter into this promised land. At this point in the narrative, the Israelites are on the eastern side of the Jordan. And they are poised to enter across the river into the land that God promised to their ancestors. Particularly to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses is this leader who has led them out of Egypt. Of course, we are probably very familiar with Moses. Even in pop culture, we see movies that, that are very famous for um, um, depicting Moses as this leader. But here, in Deuteronomy, we see that <coughs> Moses is nearing the end of his life. And he addresses this new generation that is about <coughs> to inherit the promised land. In this specific passage, Moses is speaking about the future. He tells the Israelites that God will raise up a prophet like God raised up him. A person from among the Israeli people. This prophet will speak the words of God and the people are commanded to listen to him. The passage serves as a reassurance of the Israelites to the Israelites that God will continue to provide them guidance and leadership even after Moses is no longer with them. <clears throat> This promise of a coming prophet points to the messianic prophecy of who Jesus Christ is. Jesus fulfills this prophecy of Moses as the ultimate prophet who brings the divine message and fulfills God's will and covenant with his people. Moses is telling God's people that there is one who is greater than he who will come to do even greater things, greater miracles. Just think back, back at the miracles that we know that we see God have Moses perform. What is, what is one of his, probably the most well-known miracle that Moses performs? Or Charles, Charlton Heston. <laughs> <laughs> Party in the Red Sea. Right, and, and having the water divided back, and not only that, they walk across on dry land. Land that was once covered in a sea moments before. And it's this one who is coming will do greater miracles than the crossing of the Jordan River, which is kind of the second crossing over on dry land that we see that is about to happen here and at the end of Deuteronomy. So I'm sure if you grew up seeing and hearing about these miracles as an Israelite, you're probably wondering at this point, what could be greater than the parting of the Red Sea? What could be greater than manna from heaven? Sustaining us. What could be greater than seeing us safely out of the bondage of, of one of the, the greatest empires of the world? To see them safely out of Egypt and out of the grasp of Pharaoh. What could be greater than that? Well, if we turn to our Gospel reading for this morning in Mark 1, verse 21 through 28, we see a greater miracle take place in the synagogue on the Sabbath. There in the region of Galilee. We see there in verse 22 that the audience that were gathered there listening to this 
teacher named Jesus. A teacher who did not have any formal training. <coughs> was not educated by the world. Was teaching with some kind of authority that not even the teachers and the scribes of the day had. An authority like that of perhaps the prophet Moses or even greater, like that of God speaking to them himself. Interestingly, even though Mark records here how astonished and amazed the people were that day of what Jesus was teaching, notice here in Mark, he doesn't record any of what Jesus taught, did he? Because Jesus did something even more amazing than teaching with the authority of God. He is about to do something miraculous. What does get recorded here in verse 23 is an encounter with this unclean spirit. A man who up until Jesus' teaching was probably just another face in the crowd. Just another person who came to synagogue like Sabbath. No one seemed to question why he was there. Nothing about him made him stand out. Or made anyone say, well, maybe we need to look out for this guy. And maybe this guy's going to be a troublemaker. This man was probably friends and neighbors of those that were gathered there. <coughs> Except the spirit in this man doesn't make himself known until he lashes out at the one who speaks with such authority, with the authority of God. What have you to do with us, Jesus? asked the Spirit. Have you come to destroy us? Imagine yourself, you're sitting in church and someone stands up and just starts screaming at the preacher. What would you do? What would you feel? And we see here Jesus' response. Be quiet! Now there are different English translations. If you go uh, through different translations of the Bible that translate this phrase, be quiet. <coughs> Which sounds really kind of very polite for to, to say to someone who's screaming at the teacher. Someone who is talking to a demon possessed man. He's talking to that unclean spirit. So maybe we can think of another way that Jesus said this. Of course, we go back. To the Greek translation, the, the word here means that he, or sternly, or even what would be considered rudely, said to the unclean spirit to be quiet. One translation puts it this way Jesus curtly commanded the demon to say, no more, and come out of man. Now here's a question for those of you that are English scholars. What does the word curtly mean? It's not a word that we use very often in our everyday vocabulary. Sharp. Yeah. Sharp? Brisk? Brisk. Brisk. Yeah. Curtly is an adverb, which is the adverb form of curt, meaning rudely brief. So Jesus was rudely brief. So in today's language, what could we imagine Jesus saying to this demon? 
I know we have some kids in the back, so maybe you want to cover your ears. <laughs> That's not something that we do in church a lot, but Jesus said, Shut up and come out of that man. Now, could you imagine your preacher telling you to shut up? Man, you all would be shocked and probably telling everyone on this mountain. And our preacher told us today to shut up. This guy in the back was going crazy and he just told him, shut up, come out of that man. And what did the Spirit do? They came out of that man as quick as that. So it had to be more than just please be quiet. You know, oftentimes we tell kids and, and even adults, you know, it's not polite to say, shut up. I remember one time when I was a probably a stubborn youth and got a little ignorant sometimes. I told my mom to, sh to shut up. And my, I've never seen my dad get out of his recliner as fast as I did. As I darted out the back of the door and into the snow in my bare feet and instantly regretted what I said. I did not have the authority to tell someone to shut up. Especially not my mother. And that is something that sticks with me still to this day. But Jesus had the authority. He has the authority of the Father in heaven. He had power that was to be truly feared and amazed. The people who witnessed this were amazingly confused, it says here, and questioned among themselves saying, what is this? That a teacher would tell a man to shut up and the spirit obeys? Is this a new doctrine? Is this a new religion? <clears throat> For with authority he commands even unclean spirits and they obey him. And immediately, it says there in verse 28, his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. The people in Galilee that day witnessed the kind of miracle that Moses was describing to, to the Israelites nearly 1,500 years before. Jesus began his ministry by calling his followers, by teaching and by healing like telling demons to shut up and come out of those they possess. He cast out unclean spirits. The work of the demon in that person was to be against the work of God. He was there to interrupt. Makes you wonder how long this man walked around with this unclean spirit. How long was that spirit bringing division in his life? You know, that was, that's the goal of the evil one, which is to divide and destroy and bring death. If we go back to the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. That was the purpose of the serpent, to try and divide man from their God, to cast doubt and fear, to get us to believe that we do know better than our Father in heaven. Makes you wonder how often did that man attend that church coming and going to synagogue every week maybe. And no one else recognized that he had the spirit in him. 
That wasn't of God. And it wasn't until the word of God came and began to preach the word to the people that this spirit showed itself to everyone that was there that day. This man was standing in the crowd listening. And it doesn't say that he rushed in from outside to cause a disturbance. And everyone knew that he had an unclean spirit already and they feared him. No, he was there in the crowd. It is the Holy One of God, the Word of God, who threatens those unclean spirits in our lives. It is the Holy One who threatened this evil one who lashes out because he feared the Lord. He feared the power that Jesus had. He feared the authority in which Jesus speaks with. That is why it's important for us to live our lives in the Word daily. That's why it's important that we are growing closer to God not only as individuals, but as a church body. So that we become the threat to the unclean spirits. So that we carry that word that has authority to cast out demons. So that we can tell them to shut up, and when we do, they obey. And it derails their plans. So that we can live the life that God has called us to live. There are people, there, there are people in the world who are in need of miracles such as this. This one that the Holy One of God, Jesus, offers. They need to hear the word of God so that they too can be free from sin and death. From unclean spirits that cause division. Not just in their lives, maybe the lives of their families or the lives of their friends. Of course, we may see some of these people with these unclean spirits that struggle the things that make us wonder why those that struggle with addictions whether it be food or drugs pornography maybe it's an addiction to control or abuse we see our world just seems like we are if we look at our world, it just seems like we're surrounded by unclean spirits. And there are things in our own lives that we battle every day. Sometimes unseen by the church around us. And these people, sometimes in the church, are in need, or need to hear that Jesus has set them free. That Jesus has already told that unclean spirit to shut up and get out of them. That Jesus has already forgiven us of our sins. And that the evil one has no control over our lives. There are those that need to, to be free from that kind of bondage. So that they don't have to live a life in fear of death, or maybe doubt. They no longer must wait for a prophet <coughs> who will perform miracles greater than Moses because we know that prophet has already come. That that Holy One of God has walked this earth 
has died for our sins and has set us free. And that he is alive and with us still to this day. <coughs> so let us as Christians live our lives proclaiming the good news to each other and to the whole world. Let us not cause others to stumble, but instead encourage each other to grow in knowledge and proclaim the truth of our faith. A faith that is anchored in the authority of Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of God's promises. May we live in obedience to his teachings, to find refuge in his authority, and to proclaim the kingdom of God with confidence, knowing that the prophet Moses prophesied of the one who walks with us every step of the way in our life. And that is good news. And we should want to share that. With that, I say, come, Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> now let us look up our joys and concerns this morning. <coughs> As we pray for ourselves and the needs of others. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus, who came to earth to set us free. It tells the unclean spirits, be quiet. Shut up. Get out of here. Who frees us from the burden of sin and death. Who frees us from our own anxieties and fear and surrounds us with his spirit to protect us and guide us. Lord God, we lift up these prayers to you this morning. We lift up the, the joy of Dot and Judy's birthdays. The joy that the snow has melted away and getting to experience just a little bit of spring temperatures this weekend. And the joy that more snow is coming. <coughs> As we look forward to that season where we see an earth that looks like it is in a season of death and decay bursts into life and reminds us of the, the life eternal that is given to us through Jesus Christ. May the heavens and the earth proclaim that Jesus is Lord. <coughs> Lord God, we lift up these concerns to you this morning. We pray traveling mercies for Dwayne. We pray for, for healing for Judy, for her knee surgery. We pray for healing for Joe and Marita and Joanne. We lift up Sharon, Ann, and Betty, Jane, John, Stan, Ann, Joanne, Tom. We pray for Jimmy, we lift up Pam, Scott and Angela, Doug. We pray for Donna, Anne Marie, Linda, Kyle, and Erica. We lift up Teresa, Judy, Felix and Evelyn, Tanya, Cheryl Anders, Anna May. Jerry and Jeannie Metz. And we lift up the Tapper family and the Stalemeyer family. 
as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. Lord God, we lift up all those things that are on our hearts today that we keep hidden inside ourselves that only you see and hear. May you answer each one of our prayers so that your will may be done here on earth. Just as that prayer that we pray together ourselves, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we us not
God, we lift up these gifts of tithes and offerings that are given to <coughs> this church for your glory. May you use what is given to us to multiply and to spread the gospel, never silencing what we have to say about you. Bless these gifts and this church in your holy name. Amen. Now let us sing our final hymn, number 176, Majesty. Thank you. 